So are you willing to die for what you believe? Like literally breathe your last breath for what you value. I mean, if you are, I think we can all agree that whatever it is that you're giving your life for must be pretty important. So important, so precious that you are willing to give up the most precious thing that we all have, which is life itself. Well, when it comes to Jesus and this supposed resurrection, right? The supposed idea that he did indeed rise from the dead. Here's what we've got. We've got ourselves an empty tomb. We've got ourselves a pretty weak stolen body theory. And lastly, in just the most recent video that we did, we've got ourselves many, many, many folks who claim to have seen, touched, sat with the resurrected Christ, the risen Christ. Now, what we're going to see is we have the disciples. Remember that ragtag group of dudes that were just terrified to be with Jesus when he was dying on the cross? These men also saw and touched and sat with and ate with the resurrected Christ. And they were so moved, they were so convicted by this, that they were willing to, and sometimes did, die for what it is they believed. That is pretty powerful stuff. Hey, Jim Schultz here for Fcubed and LiveFcubed.com. Hey, before we get rolling today, man, the best way that you guys could support this video is comment, comment, comment below. I mean, I want to connect with you guys or y'all from my Memphis audience. But also, the comments, the engagement, the interaction, it helps kick that YouTube algorithm into high gear and get this thing out to more people. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment box. All right, so we are now at the midway point of this little resurrection series. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? I mean, the Gospels claim that he did. I mean, Christianity as a whole basically hinges on the fact that he did. And while the empty tomb and the fragility of the stolen body theory, and all of these sightings of the resurrected Christ are really powerful supporting pieces of evidence to the, you know, to the notion that he did and that he did indeed die, or that he did indeed die and rise from the dead. Let's go with that. Those are all pretty powerful, even as I stumble through them. I actually think that what we're about to cover for the next, you know, five or eight or 29 minutes is the most powerful piece of information that we have. It is the strongest supporting piece of evidence that we possess. The disciples. These were the same guys. I know I've said it at least 18 times in just the last couple of videos. Guys, they were terrified. They fled from the scene. They weren't even there when he was being crucified. This was their leader. This was their guy. This was their answer. And they just left. These guys, they didn't want anything to do with them. And all of a sudden, they completely flipped over. All of a sudden, these guys immediately turned into warriors for Christ and protectors of the gospel. So much so that they were willing to die for that truth. Now, some would say that all of them were martyred. Some would say only some of them were martyred. And we're actually going to work through each one of them, and we're going to see what scholars believe happened to each one of the disciples, and also Paul, since Paul is uh, pretty important. I actually don't think it matters, and I trust that you'll feel the same way when this is over. I don't think that it matters if all of them died or some of them, I mean, they all died, obviously. If some of them were martyred or all of them were martyred, I actually don't think it matters at all. The simple fact that they were all willing to die, the simple fact that they were all ready to die for the gospel, that is plenty enough to offer significant support to the affirmative that Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. All right, so let's work our way through each one, even if just quickly, to bring us all kind of up to speed on what the consensus is regarding the death of each one of these disciples, plus, of course, Paul, because I think he's earned enough street cred to be included in this group. Now, I've pulled from uh, a handful of different sources, and I'll link to you know each of them down below. Specifically, I've used Fox's Book of Martyrs, which is a great resource, and I'll link to that down below as well. So let's begin with Peter. I think Peter is the one disciple whose or whom's death 
is probably the least controversial. This is a really, really famous, um, a famous death, famous martyrdom. I don't think so. We'll just go with with famous death. I think that that's that's a pretty safe place. So Peter, arguably uh, the the most famous of the disciple deaths. So Peter was crucified upside down. He didn't feel worthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus himself. So he did it upside down. There isn't really much debate over this. There isn't really too many like counter arguments saying, no, Peter actually died like this. So I think we can rest assured that Peter was so convicted. Peter was so all in on the gospel, man, that he was willing to give up his life and to do it in a way that was absolutely excruciating. Andrew... Peter's brother. Tradition holds that Andrew was also crucified, uh, possibly upside down too, although there, there is some debate over whether or not he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to do it in the same manner as uh, his brother. But the Bible itself actually doesn't say very much about Andrew's death, and there's even less information about his death kind of elsewhere. But there was a National Geographic piece. This was where a guy by the name of Dorman Newman, he's a 15th century religious historian, he claims that Andrew went to Rome to debate some of the leaders there about the gospel and about the resurrected Christ. And let's just say they didn't really love what he had to say. And so he refused to change his stance, and they refused to change their stance. And lo and behold, with his hands tied, apparently, he was crucified, which apparently that is even more excruciating than doing it with your hands nailed to the cross, which that doesn't sound amazing either. But apparently having your hands tied is, is pretty brutal. But according to the, 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 the story, while he was being crucified, in the two days that it took him to die, he apparently preached the gospel to passerby. So if that's true, like if, if Newman is correct here, think about that for a second. This guy is experiencing excruciating pain as he is dying. This guy is experiencing torture and torment like none of us can even imagine. And he is so moved by Jesus. He is so moved by the gospel. He is so moved by the resurrected Christ that he doesn't even care. He doesn't care about life. He doesn't care about pain. He doesn't care about anything. The only thing he cares about is sharing the gospel with the people that come by. Is sharing the gospel with, you know, random strangers that walk by. That is some super, super powerful stuff. So next up is James. But before we get to that, if you guys haven't done so already, man, please hit this video with a like. That really helps to push it out to more people. And that would really, really help to support what we're trying to do here with uh, the Resurrection Series and F-Cubed as a whole. But James, so John's brother. This one's actually pretty clear. Scripture itself tells us how James died. It was about, this was Acts 12 verses 1 through 2. Verses 1 through 2. Verses 1 and 2. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. Some scholars believe, or most scholars generally believe, that this happened around 44 AD. Now, what's really interesting about this is when all of this happened, the guard who was escorting James to his execution was apparently so moved by James's testimony that the guard asked James to forgive him. He asked James to bring him to Christ effectively. And so James stopped and prayed with the guard and, you know, for all intents and purposes, saved that guard's life, saved that guard's soul. And Herod, he didn't really love this whole idea. He didn't really love this whole exchange. So he actually had the guard beheaded along with James, which, uh, which is pretty crazy, pretty uh, crazy indeed. So John, so John is the author of, you know, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation. Most people believe that John died of natural causes when he was banished to the, to the island of Patmos, which is where he wrote uh, Revelation. Most people believe he died of natural causes either over on Patmos or maybe when he returned to Ephesus or whatever the case may be. Most people believe that he wasn't martyred. But here is something that's really, really interesting. In my research, I found that there were some or are some second and third century writings that actually suggest that John was almost martyred. In fact, John was, there was some attempted martyrdom on John's life. Before John was banished to Patmos, the Romans didn't really love what he was doing. And so they brought him into the Colosseum and they tried to kill him. They tried to kill him by dunking him into a vat of boiling oil. 
Now, I don't know if they used coconut oil or avocado oil. Maybe it was just pure vegetable oil. That would be pretty difficult. But what was crazy was they dunked him into that vat of boiling oil, and he just emerged unharmed. He just came out of the oil like nothing ever happened. And so the entire Coliseum, seeing this, like, you know, hundreds, thousands of people, they all immediately converted to Christianity. They all immediately said, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, really? Like, wow, this is crazy. And so I think that that may have happened first, and then they banished him to Patmos because they were like, listen, we can't kill this guy, so we've got to at least get rid of him. And uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Philip. So uh, there's actually not a ton of certainty around Philip's, Philip's death. And I think one of the reasons why is because there were actually several Philipses floating around in the Bible. And so sometimes it's, it's hard to tie one Philip to a, you know, to a given story and to a diff, to a given account with 100% certainty all the time. But most scholars do agree that Philip was martyred in some way. He was possibly beheaded, beheaded. He was possibly crucified. He may have even been stoned to death or he could have died of natural causes. That is also, there's also a, uh, a possibility. Nathaniel or Bartholomew, like Philip, he was most likely martyred, but there's some disagreement. Uh, many accounts point to his being flayed of some sort, which is effectively where your skin is just, it's, it's either peeled off or you were beaten just so severely that your skin just falls off, that your skin just kind of, it just kind of comes off on its own. And so after the flaying, Apparently, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, was beheaded or maybe just tossed into the ocean. Uh, either way, as the third hour, which is a great resource that I found in my studies, and I'll link to it down below, the way that they put it was, yeah, we're not exactly sure how it went down, but one way or another, it sounds like it was pretty unpleasant. Next up is Thomas, or Doubting Thomas, as the world knows him, of course. Uh, every account is pretty much consistent, pretty much in agreement that he was stabbed repeatedly with spears. So, uh, yeah, yikes. That does not sound amazing. Matthew. Most accounts point to martyrdom for Matthew too, but again, there's some disagreement as to how, uh, the common denominator across the board appears to be stabbing with very sharp objects. Fox's book of martyrs says the scene of his labors was Parthia and Ethiopia in which latter country he suffered martyrdom being slayed with a halberd which a halberd is uh, typically a battle axe and a pike combination, a kind of little twofer for you guys there. In the city of uh, Nadaba, which is a or in, in the city of Nadaba in AD 60, and the National Geographic actually also said that Matthew was stabbed in the back by a swordsman in Ethiopia sent by King uh, Hertekis after he criticized the king's morals. And then next up is James, uh, son of Alpheus or Alphaeus. This one is tricky because this James and James, the brother of Jesus, might be different Jameses, or they might be the same James. There's some disagreement between what modern scholars uh, believe, that they're different, and what church tradition kind of uh, hinges on, which is they're the same. Either way, this James or these Jameses were thought to have died by one of four different ways. Crucifixion, uh, body being sawed into pieces, so that's a new one that we haven't seen yet, uh, beaten, stoned, and clubbed to the head, or lastly, pushed off a wall while, while preaching the gospel, surviving the fall, then beaten, stoned, and clubbed to the head. So either way, any of those four, any of those four doesn't sound super amazing. So moving right along, we actually only have a few left to do. I know that we've uh, we've put in a good day's work here today, but Jude is up next. There's no consensus for Jude, but crucified and or shot with arrows appears to be the uh, the front runner. Uh, Simon the Zealot, possibly martyred, possibly not. Uh, if so, uh, most likely in one of the awesome ways that has already been mentioned. And then Judas Iscariot. So this was uh, the Judas that betrayed Jesus in the end. Like James, this is also recorded in the Bible, but this was, you know, the Judas uh, who betrayed Jesus. So the Bible claims that he took his own life. So this is really interesting. This is Matthew 27, verse 5. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Uh, there's a slightly different account in Acts, which this is Acts 1, verses 18 and 19. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field 
Uh, there he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language. That is, so they called their field in their language uh, Alka, Alkadama. That is field of blood. Now, those two aren't necessarily a contradiction. Uh, you know, this could have happened after he hung himself. He could have fallen off of you know the the, the hanging apparatus that he was using and then had his inter- had his intestines you know fall out onto the ground to of course fertilize the soil lastly uh, is Paul so Paul not one of the original disciples but again given all of his work in the New Testament and his having seen the resurrected Christ uh, he's widely considered an apostle himself his uh, death his uh, being martyred is is pretty unanimous across the board that it was Nero in about 64 AD that martyred Paul, that killed Paul, had Paul executed, uh, likely beheaded in a fashion very similar to John the Baptist. Whew, man, that was kind of beastly. Like that was, that was a lot. We definitely put in a good day's work there, but uh, that's what we know. That's what we know about the disciples and how each of them died. And as we saw, some of them were almost definitely martyred. Some of them maybe were not martyred. Some of them maybe were martyred. Whether they were all martyred or weren't all martyred actually doesn't really matter because we know that each of them knew that they could die for what they were doing, that they could die for what they were saying, but they didn't care. They went out and they preached the gospel fearlessly. They told as many people as they could and they did it over and over and over again. And they did this having just been terrified, right? Having just been just f- absolutely frightened to the core to even be associated with Jesus, to even be seen in the same room as Jesus. This is a drastic change. This is a radical change. And you know what? Having seen the resurrected Christ, having you know sat with and ate with and having touched the resurrected Christ, like, yeah. I think that would do it. I think that might be enough to motivate these guys to do a complete 180, to completely flip over their hearts, completely flip over their minds, and now become true warriors for Christ. It's incredible stuff, man. Incredible stuff. So there's actually a great quote by a guy uh, by the name of Charles Colson. So Charles Colson was special counsel to President uh, Nixon. He actually served prison time for his involvement in the Water, Watergate scandal. He pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice uh, during the whole Watergate fiasco. This is a quote from Charles Colson. I know the resurrection is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Every one of them was beaten, stoned, tortured, and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it wasn't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep it alive for three weeks. You're telling me the 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. So there you go, man. We've got 12 disciples all willing to testify to the fact that Jesus did, in fact, rise from the dead. Testify to that fact to the point of losing their lives. Got an empty tomb. We got a body that wasn't stolen. We've got mass sightings of the resurrected Christ. And now we have this, a group of disciples that have gone from a terrified group that were frightened to be seen with the person of Jesus to now fearlessly preaching the gospel in the name of Jesus. That's crazy stuff, man. That's crazy, crazy stuff. And that alone, honestly, that should be enough to seal the deal. Like where we stand right now, I I think we have enough now to answer the question, did Jesus really rise from the dead? I really, really think we do. But we're going to press on. We're going to press on because we've got two more videos. We've got two more videos. I really want to nail this thing down. And also, 
I need that YouTube watch time, man. So we're going to keep this thing going for two more videos. The next video is about to start here in a couple of seconds. We're going to get into the explosion of Christianity. And this is going to be an interesting little ditty indeed. If you guys want to hit me with a like or a share or a subscribe on your way out the door, that would be awesome. If you want to leave me a rating or a review, if you happen to be listening to the audio only version of this, that would also be awesome. So I will see you guys in the next video, which is starting right now.